my controversial Battlefront opinion. Oh, you're back talking about Battlefront again. Hell yeah, I am. Why? Well, for some reason, it seems like the topic of Battlefront is kind of on the rise again. I don't know if we're getting more players or not. All I can say is that finding games in Battlefront 2 is still extremely easy. And there are some really cool stuff in the works, such as Kyber V2, which I think will revolutionize Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the PC. But more on that in a later video. Overall, I've just seen more talk out on social media about people demanding a Battlefront 3 or just sharing memories about Battlefront 2. I feel like every post I make about Battlefront on my Twitter account or X or whatever you want to call it gets a crap ton of attention from just hungry Star Wars fans that really want to discuss Battlefront and of course have a new Battlefront. I think a lot of this stems from the fact that we have plenty of Star Wars games in the works but still no proper multiplayer game. Sure, Star Wars Hunters, whenever that releases, but I'm talking about a multiplayer game on PC and consoles. A Battlefront 3 or something that caters to the same audience of a shooter, a multiplayer, online, live service Star Wars game. Because if we had that to look forward to, I honestly don't think the talk would be as much about Battlefront, because then we had something new to be excited about. So I saw this post the other day about Battlefront 3 and what people want to see changed for a Star Wars Battlefront 3. So I quoted that with my fairly controversial opinion and there was a lot of discussion to be had after that. I think those of you who have followed me for a long time and watched my live streams and such, you probably know exactly what I want from a Battlefront 3 or from a Battlefront game in general. But in this video, I'm not gonna talk about potential replacements for Battlefront or a Overwatch Star Wars game. I'm just gonna talk about if, if we get a Battlefront, what do I think or what do I hope that we'll actually get into the game. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of discussion in the comments, so please keep it civil. We're all entitled to our opinions and we can discuss it without getting angry at each other, right? And if you disagree with me, completely fine. And before we get into my lengthy opinion on Battlefront, I just wanted to give a big shout out to G Fuel for continuing to support my channel. Obviously, it's a bit of a downtime right now when nothing is really going on. So I appreciate them sticking around my channel for so many years. And if you guys are interested in a sugar-free, healthy energy drink or hydration drink, depending on what you prefer, they have both caffeinated and non-caffeinated in, well, almost hundreds of different flavors, consider checking out the link in the description below. There will be a flavor you like for sure and they have some really good starter kits too where you just get one shaker and seven different flavors to try out for around $12 because if you use my code SHIV you get at least 20% off all their products on the website and you will of course be directly supporting the channel and my content with every purchase you do so that is very much appreciated link is in the description below use code SHIV but now let's continue so what do I think about a Star Wars Battlefront 3? I think the main issue with Battlefront is that it is a cursed franchise. It's a franchise that has so high expectations that it will never be able to fulfill the expectations of all the different fans. And that's why no one takes upon themselves the task of creating a new Battlefront game. Let me give you an example. Star Wars Battlefront 2 launched, and I do know that Battlefront 2 had one of the largest development teams DICE or potentially EA has ever had. Three full studios working on the game for years to get something that content-wise was pretty good, but still missed a lot of stuff. And I'm ignoring the loot box fiasco altogether here, because that's not relevant when it comes to content. But I mean, we didn't have supremacy, we didn't have have co-op, we didn't have instant action, we didn't have Anakin, Obi-Wan, Grievous, Dooku, Geonosis, Felucia, and so on. All of that came post-launch, despite the massive team that the game had. And why is that? Well, because Battlefront needs to have everything. A single-player campaign, space battles, large and small-scale battles on the ground with infantry, vehicles, heroes, and much more. It's a game that has everything and caters to every type of Star Wars fan. And that's kind of the beauty and the curse of Battlefront. That's why so many people love the game and that's why it sells so much and why it's so popular, but also why it's pretty much impossible to make a Battlefront 3. Because if you go to a developer and tell them, okay, you wanna make a Star Wars game? Why don't you pick a focus? Let's make a flying game. Squadrons, let's make a story game. Fallen Order, Survivor, Outlaws, Eclipse. Nice, let's do that. We need X amount of developers to create this. We focus on making this one thing really good and we can sell a lot of copies. Oh wait, you don't wanna make Battlefront? Well, don't we need to make basically a single player game, multiple multiplayer games, 
and co-op and instant action and we basically need to make three games in one and we might sell a little bit more copies than the single player games but still it's about three times as high risk to create battlefront no let's make our own game that has one focus no pre-existing expectations like the battlefront franchise has way lower risk but still extremely high potential to sell well. I think that's roughly how the conversations go and why we're not gonna get a Battlefront 3. And that's why my controversial opinion on a potential Battlefront 3 is that I don't think there should be a single player campaign at all. I know what they sacrificed in Battlefront 2 in order to have that campaign. If they did not have the single player campaign, it would have launched with a lot more multiplayer content. Who knows, maybe all the content that we got in the post-launch support. So cutting out the single player campaign altogether, that would lower the risk quite a bit. And one argument that people have then is, well, people complained that there was no campaign in the first Battlefront game. And that's true, it did have a lot of criticism for that, it did however lack multiplayer content too, and still it is the most sold Star Wars game ever, despite all those flaws. Showing that Battlefront is a multiplayer game in its core. I'm not saying ditch the single player part, that's where instant action and co-op comes in, which is basically a single player version of the multiplayer modes. Way more efficient to develop, and honestly, has way more replayability. I mean, I've played the campaign twice, but I've played way more hours of co-op or something like that. So that's, in my opinion, more than enough to cater to the players who mostly want a relaxing environment. The second opinion, though, that's something I think a lot of people might disagree on. I don't think we need space battles. Every single game that has space battles or flying dies. Whether it's squadrons, or Starfighter Assault, that's always the mode that people find exciting for a month and then it dies down. More wasted development and risk that I think could be completely removed from the game. And yeah, I know, there's always been space battles in Battlefront, except of course for the first EA game where we had Fighter Squadron, but it, it kind of had the same feeling, even though Starfighter Assault of the second game was way superior, and I still think it's really cool mode. But it's been done now, it's been done multiple times, and pretty much perfected, but that's why I think it would be an absolute waste to just do it again for a new Battlefront game, as all that would do is add more risk while at the same time leaving less other multiplayer content for the full launch of the game. Spaceships on the ground? Sure, I'll agree on that. I personally don't think it adds any value at all. If you play Battlefront and someone is playing a ship on Galactic Assault or Supremacy, all they're doing is basically strafe running helpless people on the ground. It doesn't add anything to the objective, it really is kind of pointless. In Battlefield at least you can use it to move troops around and it kind of adds more to the objective play of the mode, but in Battlefront it's only for strafe running, so I'm not sure why people think that's so important but sure if you want ships on the ground battles i'll accept that even if i don't think that should be the focus either but i realized that removing all this stuff might make it not battlefront anymore and maybe i am just leaning towards i want a multiplayer ground-based trooper and heroes versus villain mode because that's what 99% of the people play in Battlefront. That's what adds longevity to the game. That's where they can add a ton of new maps, modes, heroes, characters, skins, weapons, whatever you want. That's where the long-term Battlefront development should be. And that is what everyone is missing right now. It's not a flying game that people are missing. It's not single player stories, because we have a crap ton of those coming. It is that multiplayer focused sandbox shooter slash heroes versus villains ground battle that everyone is missing. So that's why I think it's fine to cut out all of these things to make the absolute best Battlefront game possible. Maybe it shouldn't even be called Battlefront 3, because that again comes with all the expectations that I have previously mentioned. Maybe it should just be called Battlefront Ground Assault, Battlefront Galactic Conquest, or whatever it could be. Maybe it shouldn't even be $60, I'm not sure. All I know for certain is that if a game like that came out, let's say roughly at the state of what Battlefront 2 is right now or when they cancel the support, and they kept adding new updates to it with new Star Wars series, movies, and all that kind of stuff, millions of people would play it. There's still millions of people, I think at least, playing Battlefront. And that game hasn't had an official update for years. Just imagine a game that actually got updates. So I ask you, if you actually think about what you want from a Battlefront game, do you need all of these things that makes Battlefront pretty much the impossible game to develop? Or do you just want the focused things that I mentioned? Because 
you're more than welcome to disagree with me. One argument that I saw a lot on my tweet was, oh, I just love when people demand less content from the developers for the same amount. That's just great. Basically thinking that I just want less content for the same amount of money. That's not the case. What I'm asking you here is, if you could choose Battlefront 2 at launch or Battlefront 2, how it was in 2021, but without the space battles and campaign, what would you pick? I know I would pick the 2021 version for sure. With all the new heroes, with all the new maps, with all the new modes, with all the new content. I would much rather have that kind of fleshed out, polished, amazing experience with so many modes on the ground than the launch version that instead has a little bit of everything. Again, you're more than welcome to disagree with me on that. But if I had those two options, the decision would be extremely easy for me, as I probably have a combined playtime of maybe 10 hours in the campaign and space battles the last three years, whereas I have hundreds of hours on all the new ground-based stuff they've added instead. So yeah, are we getting a Battlefront game? No. And I think that's because of the reasons I brought up. Are we getting a multiplayer game? Doesn't seem like it, even though I find that to be extremely stupid. There's obviously a huge need for a multiplayer Star Wars game, and why no one picks up on that, I have no idea. But I hope that within a couple of years, we'll at least hear word about something like that to give us Battlefront fans something to look forward to. But that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you. Thank <laughs> you.